All right. I think everything is up and running. I'm just doing some last minute tweaks with the audio. And we can go ahead and get started. I think my mic is coming in a little bit lower than usual. What I'm going to do is switch to the Jamstream layout. And then we can make sure everything's good to go with the sound before we get started. I see Wazzy's in the chat. What's up, Wazzy? Let me see why audio is so much lower today. How's this? Oh, if I if I talk normally in the mic, are you folks able to hear me okay? Let's see. Sound sounds fine in my ear. I'm going to probably have to sound check a little bit for actual beatbox noises, but let me know if just regular talking is causing the mic to peak. It looks like I'm hitting just the bottom of yellow in OBS, which should be f fine. But yeah, let me know if you have if you have trouble hearing me, and I can I can tweak it as necessary. All right, I think what I'll do I wanted to do a little bit of a sort of catch up and intro today, like we normally do. But let me put down a real simple loop beat just to have some background noise while I'm talking here, and then I'll I'll kill it once we actually start the practice session. Let's leave that there for now. Hey, Pine Size Kiwi's here. Kiwi says, so I've fallen down the weirdest YouTube rabbit hole. You know those emergency alert alarms that are sometimes on TV? Like the public broadcast ones that have the, like the really loud tone if there's a like a natural disaster or something? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, I've seen those before. Kiwi says, well, there are, are hypothetical ones, and a lot of them are for some reason SCP related. Like a, a public alert thing if a creature from the SCP Foundation gets out. I guess that's strangely specific. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing I've heard on the internet, though. All right, so what are we going to be working on today? Today's probably going to be a bit of a split between doing some drills, practice, uh, maybe some beatbox technique and sound theory if anything really occurs to me. I didn't prepare, prepare a sort of lesson outline or anything today. I think it's been a couple weeks or so since we last did one of these. So the plan was to just sort of jump back in and, and kind of grind out some things that I've been wanting to work on and do some sort of status updates on developing sounds that I've been working on and then just sort of see where the, the practice part of the stream goes and then we'll spend the last half or so depending on how long that takes working on BGM ideas. 
Kiwi says, like the ones that do that ear piercing noise and go something like weather emergency for the following counties. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Kind of like if there's a tornado alert or like a tsunami warning or an earthquake warning, they just do that for weird creatures. He says, and I may have fallen down the rabbit hole because I saw a video explaining the noise it makes. I've entered the YouTube matrix, Raku. It's really not that difficult to stumble into the weird side of YouTube, I find. Hey, Iconic's here. What's up, Iconic? Welcome to the jam stream. I hope your day is going well. We are just getting started here, I'm doing a bit of uh, an intro, and we're about to start warming up before we get into practice and explanation of technique and sound theory. I kind of says the sky is up. That is true. The sky is up. Space is up. My blood pressure is up. I kind of says, I'm well, thanks. Hope you was good. I'm good. I could have woken up a little bit earlier for planning purposes today. But other than that, it's all good. See, Kiwi redeemed swear timer. All right. There you go. says no swearing beats I really wish I had a sound sample for like a swear beep beeper noise like they do the censor naughty words on television I think that'd be really funny to have as a sample on hand so that I could put it into a loop let's see Kiwi says also if you have a bee theming why is your background octagons and not hexagons it was on the last version of my beatbox jam stream template it's still on some of my layouts for other things. Like some of the gaming ones. I think it's a mix. The reason why I changed it was to upgrade the, the shape and pattern design. And also because NFTs. Because the internet is terrible. Now when people see hexagons because of those, that profile pick thing. A lot of times they immediately think of NFTs. So I didn't like that. That's why I started switching my pattern up to octagons. Maybe after that, I'll do uh, like decagons or something, like a 10 sided. But good eye. You're the first person that, to ask me about that. Kiwi says Also, I'm a bit behind on the stream right now because I met my grandparents and the stream cuts out a bit. Okay. Uh, let me know if you're, anyone else on the stream is noticing consistent hiccups or other weird things with the stream. Everything with the connection looks all right. I don't see any drop frames. I think things are stable, but if it starts stuttering or having issues for everybody, uh, let me know. Usually these ones aren't too bad because I'm not streaming a lot of really complex things on screen. It's just me, my avatar. Moving around. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to warm up. So we'll go ahead and kill this. This will be a good chance for me to, to sound check and make sure everything is coming in good audio wise I'd rather I'd rather my speaking be a little bit quieter and then 
That way I don't have to basically get right up next to the mic because I know the actual percussive sounds from the beatboxing will cause it to peak, especially the sharp things like some of the snares. But let's go ahead and get started with warm up. What I'm going to do is run through some really simple patterns with the, the basic instruments just to get the blood flowing in my face. And then from there, we'll sort of segue into some of the other stuff that I was going to talk about kind of more on the developing sound side. Since again, I didn't prepare anything for technique and sound theory unless people have questions. And if you do, just drop them in chat. Feel free to stop me and we can always talk about stuff. All right, so let's see. For basic warm ups, let's keep it simple. <laughs> Switch. all over my monitor. I was trying to sort of look out of the corner of my eye since when I'm standing up, <clears throat> my main monitor that has OBS on it is below my eye line. I'm trying to make sure nothing was peaking too bad. Let me see. I can see it now. If I, if I don't point the mic, the PF snares, that's fine. I don't see it getting into the red. Iconic says space spit. That's right. Just making a mess. I didn't do anything with BGMs. Let me make sure that that's not going to hit the mic too hard. Let's see. Okay, that one. That peaks the hardest. I need to be careful with that. I need to point slightly away. So we're doing something like... I need to be slightly away because I point directly at the mic. It's going to deafen you folks. Other than that, I th think sound check is good. We'll just continue to monitor it like normal. I know I harp on, on sound quality a lot, but it's my biggest paranoia when it comes to streaming. But while we're sort of segueing out of warm up, in fact, let me change the caption here. We will we'll call this. Oh, I can turn the swear, swear timer off. I need to I need to point someone 
party in charge of reminding me to turn that off when it expires. So it's not just sitting there on screen being annoying. But let's see, for sound theory discussion, are there a couple instrument sounds that I did want to sort of revisit and talk about? Like we usually do on these particular jam streams, when I bring up either techniques, sounds, or things within beatbox that is either something I want to talk about or something I haven't talked about for a while. It's good to sort of recap and just sort of relook at things, especially if sounds have changed since the last time we talked about them. And I kind of wanted to explore the idea of other types of alternate instruments on today's stream. Just sort of thinking through in my head if I were to go through a list of all the different sounds and instrument types that people can have. One of the ones that I always like to talk about because it's the most interesting to me is snares. And if you think of a drum set or a drum kit or even an electronic drum machine, obviously the main instrument components that you have for constructing a rhythm would be, you know, your kick, your kick drum, the pretty simple. You have hats or cymbals in a lot of cases depending on the type of feel for the rhythm and song that you're putting together. You might have a real quick hit, something like a or you might have like an open hi-hat, like a You could even have a crash, which isn't really used too much in beatboxing as far as I know. But between those two, the third thing that usually pair with all of those sound sets together is the snare. And if I were to think, just in my mind, all the ones that we typically talk about on these sessions, or the common ones that are used, obviously you have one of my favorites, the PF snare. The <laughs> sounds like just a snare head hit. You have the outwards K, one of the early fundamental sounds of beatboxing which sounds like a more sharp, almost rim shot ish type hit. Kind of like an impact on the side of the drum. And that sounds like <coughs> Wazi says Tattle's watching the stream. I think she likes the noises. Oh, I'm sure if you were to make beatboxing noises to a cat, they would be really confused. But if she's not outright scared by the, the weird alien noises, then, then that's good. On the topic of K snares, again, out, outwards K snare sounds like <coughs> the inwards K snare sounds like <coughs> hits a little bit different, has kind of a breathy kind of impact behind it, depending on how sustained the note is. But the interesting thing is that it's a different, again, flavor of percussive noise than the outwards K. And, I, and like we've talked about on previous streams, the inwards K is one of the more difficult beginner sounds to learn just because it's a really weird sort of technique. It's not, not a, a technique people are normally doing whenever they're talking or whatnot. So let's see, we have PF snares, we have K snares. My other favorite one is the BGM or spit snare when I was testing a second ago. And that's one that sounds like Iconic says, also Tattle speaks beatbox, so that's why she can't meow. Case solved. There you go. Secret language that cats can speak has been decoded here on this random stream today. So in addition to the BGM snare, there are, I wanted to look at some other ones. We have PF, K snares, BGM, Let's see, there is a couple other ones that I don't use as much that are kind of permutations of the different ones we've talked about so far. So another one that I hardly ever use, it's a bit more of an old school sound, is a PSH snare, I think it's technically called. And it's like the like PF snare, if you break it down by component, is a P and an F sound together to get the 
So a P a PSH snare would sound like, psh, and it's a lot more sharp and kind of more dry sounding. And it's one I don't use a lot, and it's pretty easy to do. You're basically just taking a P sound and a sh, a sh sound, shortening into one syllable, making a real quick burst. And that's how you get the psh. So if you put it into a beat real quick, it'd be something just like a hip hop beat. Something like that. Hey, Edwards here. Edward says, can you talk a bit more about how to do the inward K? Sure. Uh, I'll sort of do a, a kind of quick breakdown of how to do it. And for folks who've never tuned into the sort of sound theory breakdown of this sound, we've talked about it off and on, but it's usually different groups of people. So this will be sort of like a recap for those who've heard it before and new information for folks that are t tuning in for the first time. So inward K, again, inward K sounds like this. And it's done by breathing a little bit of air in, but you have to set a mouth position first before you even worry about taking air in. And I've been thinking a little bit off and on about how to tweak my explanation and kind of make it easier for people to understand. But we'll start with the sort of way I broke it down before. So this sound is primarily created using your tongue. And I did want to emphasize something I don't think I've mentioned consistently that might make it easier for folks that are actually trying to do the sound. So the first thing you have to do is seal your airway in your mouth by sealing your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And if you do that, I won't be, you won't be able to hear anything. But if you seal your tongue to the top and completely block air and try and breathe in, then you get nothing. It's just a... If you do that with your tongue... Forcefully, it's how you get the sucker punch sound. But if you just place your tongue and then make it so no air can get past it and it's completely sealed and it feels like, you know, something is blocking your airway, that's the first step. That's the set position for the inward K. Once you have that position set and no air can get past, you're going to attempt to breathe in a short breath of air and at the same time, you're going to bring the back of your tongue down to let air in. You're not going to drop your whole tongue from the tip and whatnot, just the back. And so thinking about the position, you can keep your tip of your tongue anchored the whole time when you're doing this. It, if it doesn't need to move, it's the back of your tongue that's going to release the seal. So if you think about it from just the muscle perspective, if you have your tongue sealed and then you slowly bring the back down and just inhale normally, it sounds like you get a little bit of a sharp hit on mine because it's used to doing the K snare. But for most people, it's probably just going to be like a once the back comes down and you, and that's keeping the tip up at the top, which is why you're getting that sort of hissing noise because air is going around your tongue, essentially, and going into your, your throat from the corners and moving past. So the way the snare works is doing that drop of the back has to be timed with your, your breath intake at the same time. And here's something that I didn't emphasize a lot and it did help me. I just remembered when you do this, it helps to sort of pick a side of your tongue to sort of guide the air through. And that's, that sounds really weird and it's something you got to experiment with a little bit, but the way you can kind of, get the airflow to move in a direction is to move your jaw to the side. I move mine to the right. So the technically the snare is on the left side of my tongue and it's like the left side that's sort of popping down, but moving your jaw to the side forces that to sort of guide into one of those two channels, either the left or right. If you've never done it before, you just pick one. It doesn't matter. Some people can do an inward K from the middle and that's really hard to do. But if you, Take the sealed pressure motion, breathe in and move your jaw to the side all at once. You will get something that sounds a bit more like an impactful snare, but it won't be clean. But th that combination of motions is how you're getting a. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm moving my jaw to the left. I never haven't actually sat and thought about it for a second. 
Yeah, if I, if I move it to the right, then it, it does it on the right. Moving it to the left puts it on the left side. Certain techniques in beatboxing make sounds come out of the opposite side depending on which way you move your face. Not for the inward K. Whatever, whichever direction you move it to, that's the side that the sound is essentially going to come out on. And so the tricky thing is sort of learning, one, the motion of inhaling, popping the back of your tongue, and then moving your jaw to whatever side. And then once you can sort of get like a loose kind of wet, like a sound, practicing it over and over again until you get the muscle memory and strength. And over time, it gets sharper. And my inward K at the beginning was pretty messy. It was not my strongest snare by any means. But just practicing it over and over again and doing the muscle memory and repetition is how you clean it up to get really sharp. And then it goes from that sort of breathy, kind of loose type of noise to the sharp. <coughs> and it's a really neat sound because it's it hits pretty hard. And like we've talked about before, when it comes to air regulation and not running out of air and passing out on your feet, you can use it to intake a little bit of air real quickly when you're doing in between beats. Like we I think the sample we used before would be something like Each one of those snare hits you're hitting in that sample pattern is a kind of micro breath of air inwards. Not a lot. And if you're doing something that requires a lot of output of air, like a technicality or a bass or something else, it's not really going to equalize your, your intake and your output. And so you'll, you'll probably have to take a breath eventually. But if you're not, and it's sort of equal, you can kind of sustain a rhythm for a long time and not have to stop and take a breath because you're getting those little bits of air in. It's one of the tricky things when it comes to balancing how you're constructing a routine in beatboxing. The aspect of breathing and economy of air is surprisingly important if you want to be able to control what you're doing and not, you know, either pass out on your feet, which you never want, or run out of air and have to stop what you're doing and take in deep breath of air. One thing the well-known beatboxer Kindo sort of explains in some of his lessons is how practicing breathing techniques and learning how to regulate your air ultimately over time improves your lung capacity. And if anyone here on stream has ever played a musical instrument or sang, because you're using you know, air and your lungs to power whatever it is you're doing, over time, the more you do that, the more air your lungs have the ability to hold. And the same thing holds true for beatboxing as well. If you kind of get in the habit of just practicing, making sure you're not hyperventilating whenever you're doing stuff, over time, it sort of improves your control and ability to regulate how much air you're using. And you won't be running into a situation where you're either expelling too much air or not taking or taking in too much. Because that could be a problem too if you're not careful. And so that's something that I'll also re revisit every once in a while when it comes to regulating air control and whatnot because it it's an interesting topic and it's kind of something you learn over the long term. Uh, but that sort of wraps up the a real quick explanation of Inward K. Hopefully that helped for, for Edward since I know you mentioned it. I've also recommended for some of the more difficult beginner sounds, people that are interested in learning beatboxing, I always encourage to just go to YouTube and look up tutorials for all the different sounds. There's a wealth of t tutorials by people in the scene that explain the sound theory and technique different ways. And some of them click with people better than others because everybody's mouth physiology is a little bit different and the way mus muscles work a little bit different. Sometimes one explanation might not be clicking for you. So when I was hitting a wall trying to learn some sounds, I would also always just grab a bunch of different tutorials and look at the different explanations and try them all. And usually, eventually, I would find one that clicked. I think the biggest example that I've talked about before on stream is how I learned the lip rolls. 
the regular dry lip roll was the one that took me longer to learn than the inwards one. And the, the regular dry one is my follow alert sound that you hear me do every once in a while. That's the... That took a long time. And a couple key things that helped me were purely just a matter of how I was practicing the sound. And then once I got the basic motion, I'll just practice getting better at it and the sound improves over time. But getting that first part to click is what's difficult. And checking a lot of different resources and stuff that's out there can help with that. Back on the topic of snares. So we've got most of the air-based or I guess lip lip and or tongue snares, I guess you can call them. Iconic Redeem Hydrate. One step ahead of you, dude. I am doing my best to keep hydrated. On the topic of snares, there's a couple other ones I wanted to sort of talk about and some variants and variations and technique, mostly because they're not ones I use a lot. So again, the first one I used was the, or talked about was the PSH, the I probably should use that one more often because it's a bit different. Another one is the cough snare, and I'm, I don't have a really good cough snare. That one is also pretty interesting because it sounds different from all of the other ones. It's pretty distinct. It's just not one that I readily think to use in patterns and beats. And so the cough snare, which I think I've talked about briefly before when we did our, our breakdowns of sound theory way back. This might have even been on YouTube before we started here on Twitch. But the way you do the cough snare, it's kind of literally what it sounds like, but not quite. You're not, you're not doing like a cold, I have a cold cough into the mic. You could, but that's not the way the sound works. The cough snare, if I can do it, sounds like, <coughs> and mine's, mine's kind of weak and not very sharp because I don't practice it a ton. But if I put it into a beat, that same one from before, it might be something like, puts, puts, <coughs> And it's got that kind of airy, breathy noise, but if you practice it enough, it gets really sharp on the first hit of the sound. That, <clears throat> again, mine's not very strong because I don't practice it. But the more you do that, the more impactful it gets, and the sort of reverb underneath it sort of pairs with that. And people who have really good cough snares would be folks in the scene like Napalm, Napalm, known for popularizing lip rolls in the beatbox scene, he's got a really good cough snare, and he does, I think he does it in his role like this song that he does. But I, I do need to practice that one more because it's very different, and it's pretty neat. But you can also do a variation of the cough snare. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head. I've seen a lot of people do it. It's like a synth cough snare because it's done the same way, but it's vocalized. And it goes way higher in pitch. And that one sounds like... Ah! It's almost like a Yelp type noise. But it's kind of like a, a melodic cough snare. I don't know what it's called. I'd have to ask a pro since that's one I definitely don't use a lot. It's kind of like a synth cough snare, but it's done the same way. Basically, for to break down the technique on a cough snare, since folks may be hearing it for the first time, the way you do it, as I can explain it, because again, it's not a sound I use a lot, is kind of like doing a grunt from your throat, kind of like a uh, uh noise. And, but you're taking away the voice part, so instead of just a uh, uh, it's uh, And you're kind of mixing it with like the motion of coughing. And then the part that creates sort of the reverb effect is you breathe out through your mouth like a So it's like a uh without the vocalization. That's how you get the... <coughs> Very tricky. Oh, yeah, Fancy Fancy's here. Fancy Fancy says, I have been off Twitter and Discord to cleanse myself. That's probably for the best. I don't think anybody's life is improved by spending a lot of time on social media or conversation platforms. Discord, it kind of depends on which Discords you roll in, but... As a person who uses Twitter to primarily just keep track of folks that I know, 
and or provide updates on stuff I'm working on. Especially as a VTuber, it seems like every other day there's drama in the VTuber community for some reason. I try and just avoid it. It is not productive and getting into the spiral of doom scrolling on Twitter is is never good, especially when there's all sorts of crazy chaotic stuff going on in the world. But back to that that sort of synth cough snare that there is a way to sort of get that one to reverb a little more, but it's, again, not a technique I readily use. So if we were to think about how you'd fit it into a beat, slots in like any other snare, right? <clears throat> you'd have something like... If you sort of play with the mouth position and give your mouth kind of an O shape and kind of shape the that kind of high-pitched sound as it comes out, I think that's how you get some of that reverb noise. That's how, instead of just getting like a, just a yelp into nothing, that's how you're getting a, a little bit of an echo. That's not done with any production. It's just because I'm changing the shape of my mouth as the sound is coming out. And it's very fast. But it's kind of versatile because you could change the pitch a little bit and sort of change where it's coming from. I'm not good at doing it, but it is another tool that you can put into the repertoire of sounds one person's got a really good sort of melodic cough snare if you will is gene shinozaki he he uses that in a lot of his routines and he does it very very well much better than i can even replicate here lion tamer redeemed hydrate hey what's up lion tamer welcome to the jam stream i will take a drink of my smoothie here But yeah, cough snares are interesting. They're, they they hit differently in sounds, and I really should do them more often. Ah, Lion Tamer says, I finished doing laundry. I can now rest and relax. Well, that's good. I usually do my laundry on Mondays. I used to do it on Sundays, but I don't really go out that much, so I don't generate a ton of laundry. So I usually do mine on Mondays and do it all at once. But let's see, let me think. If, oh, we're going to continue to break down snares. And one that I kind of forget to mention a lot, but it's really important, especially for some of the stuff we're going to talk about later. We have the rim shot, the, the actual in beatbox rim shot sound, which is a cousin to the inward K. It's basically done in the same motion. And usually they recommend that you learn the inward K first since it's done from the same position but it's done with just mouth pressure and not breathing in. It's, an, it's a non-breath snare. So if you remember 10 minutes ago, we were talking about the inwards K. It sounds like... <coughs> the rim shot sounds like... <coughs> similar type of hit, but it's not breathy at all, and it's very short. And as a result, it is very handy for things like technicality which we will we'll talk about sort of after the discussion of instruments and snares. But the rim shot, again, I think it's speed is its biggest asset when it comes to the beatbox arsenal of sounds. So if we were to compare the ability to do the sound quickly in a beat, if we were doing something like a drum and bass rhythm, real, real simple standard drum and bass rhythm, and we're using the inwards K sound. We make it something like. Pretty simple. You've heard it in a million drum and bass songs out there. If we were to take that sound and use the rim shot in the exact same rhythm, it would sound like. And I think I did it maybe about 10% faster too that time. But the rim shot, because it's not a breathing sound, could be done much faster. And if you wanted to do a more complex rhythm, you could do it with that sound because it's so quick. And because it's one of the staples of the TKK in technicality, it's pretty easy to slot in. So the one variation for drum and bass I was kicking around a while back, let me try and think of how I set it up. It might be something like... 
Let's see. Hmm. We did it on stream. It was a long time ago. I don't see. That's kind of a variation close to what I was thinking of. It's not exact, but if, we're, if I were to go. A lot more rapid and quick. And the main reason why it's easier to do that with the rim shot is because I'm not having to breathe, breathe in for each snare in the set. Like I could do that with the inwards K, but it's a lot harder. That would sound like. And I can do it and it sounds okay, but it's harder because I'm having to breathe for each snare that you're hearing in that hit in that sort of faster speed combo. And so a lot of the building of rhythms and beats and beatboxing like we've talked about on these streams is experimenting around with sound combinations and trying to figure out, okay, what makes the most sense and what's the most efficient? Because you could kind of plug and play a lot of things, but the beat's going to sound more clean if you're doing things that are more efficient that work with whatever it is you're doing. And that's sort of the fun experimental nature of beatboxing, right? You can say, all right. Here's my rhythm. I'm going to cycle through every snare I know and just see how it sounds to my ears. And at the end, say, okay, this one is the one that worked the best. If I was going to repeat that chain of sounds in a routine, I think I want to select this one because it's going to be the most efficient way to do that. And then that's how you sort of put stuff together. Maybe in the future, we can have kind of like a, a pattern and routine discussion again. And sort of talk about how you put the components of things together to form a routine. Because I don't think I've talked about that a whole lot on stream. The idea of, yeah, you can, you can make sounds and combine them to make patterns. But if you're taking those patterns and creating a routine, that's the you know more fleshed out song performance aspect of beatboxing, right? Like, I could be sitting here doing... All day long. But if I wanted to actually structure a routine that's a start, middle, end, or transitions in between, then it's not just random sounds put together into a pattern. It's taking those patterns and arranging them like you would in an actual fleshed out song. And then if you're on stage or in a battle or something, you're performing that in that order, like a structured song or like a dance or any sort of thing. That's why they call it a routine. It's a planned sequence of things constructed into a whole song. And we haven't really talked about that. So if, if routine construction is something you folks want me to talk about in the future, I can definitely do that. Uh, I'm not an expert at it by any means, but I have created routines. You, you, you folks have heard some of them on other streams. They're not the most complex, but they are organized, structured things that I use for instances where I need to bust out something that's a bit more organized than just a freestyle. So that's the difference. All right. I think that will do for the discussion on snares. We talked about snares for almost freaking half hour. Moving on to developing sounds and specifically technicality. Technicality, like we've seen on previous jam streams, is one of my favorite topics in beatboxing to talk about. To me, it's one of the most experimental and versatile parts of the art form. And it's so free form in its concept that anybody can develop technicality pretty much any way they want, as long as they have a grasp of how to create sounds. And so to sort of recap for folks who may be tuning in for the first time on the streams here, technicality is just sound combos or chains. It's not necessarily speed patterns, and you'll hear me say this a lot because in the beatbox community, sometimes technicality sort of gets lumped in with the idea of speed patterns, but it's it doesn't apply to just fast, fast combos and fast chains. A lot of it does, but it's just pairing sounds together to create a chain or combo of sounds that you slot in different places in your beat. Iconic says, smoking sexy beats. That's right. 
we need a DMC style rating counter for when creating routines and patterns. But to, to sort of break down the concept of technicality, again, just in case anyone here has never heard that term before, a real easy example of how that looks, and I'll use the one that I've been practicing because it's one I wanted to talk about today. I mentioned it a little bit ago when we were talking about the rim shot, but you have the TKK, sort of the standard sound set people learn when they're first trying to get into mastering technicality and applying it to beatboxing. So because it's been, I think, a few streams since I broke it down, the explanation of the TKK sound is T is just a hi-hat noise, and it's not a TS, it's just a T. So if you think about hitting a, high, a closed hi-hat, just a t -t 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 -t. literally just the letter T without the E, the vocalization. So t -t 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 -t. the K, the big K in technicality, in the middle one, is a K sound like the letter, just without the vocalization. So just a k -k 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 -k. so you have. And the last K, which has sort of been a discussion point amongst the community because it's confusing, is a different type of snare. But I think it'd be easier to denote it with another letter because technically you write it T, capital T, little K, big K, I think is the most common way to write it. Because the little K is the k -k -k sound, the big K is the rim shot. And that's the k -k -k -k. the un un non-breath version of the case snare the rim shot so you have t -k -k. those are the three sounds of tkk and the way it works in the technicality set is doing those in succession as a triplet set so t -k -k. and while that might not sound substantial on its own the point is to take that sound set and string them together and use them to chain into other things and to get further back in the past, in case people haven't heard this part of the story before, usually folks that are starting off in beatboxing that want to get into the technical aspects learn that set first, the TKK. I am one of the weirdos who didn't do that. I couldn't do the rim shot for a long time. That sound took me forever to learn because I couldn't get the technique down. So the technicality sound I learned first was the TKP or TKB, depending on how you do it. And that's the one that sounds like T, same T, it's just two thirds of the same sound, but instead of the third sound being a rim shot, it's just a P sound, just a Very similar to a B sound, they're sort of synonymous in that case. So TKP, and that was where I learned for technicality first. And when, when I do different routines and patterns and whatnot, you'll hear me string those three together a lot. It's one I try not to overuse. But before we get back to TKK, since that's the developing aspect of the discussion here, since I learned the TKP first, I just practice that over and over again. And the way technicality works is as your mouth, muscle memory gets familiar with doing familiar sounds over and over again, for technicality, that's how you get speed. It's consistency and speed that come with just practicing and drilling over and over and over and over again. And so for the TKP, I just started doing the triplet sounds as filler in between different parts of beats. So let's see, if we were to think about how to illustrate that, it might be something like a hip hop type beat where I would do something like... And you hear in between different parts of the rhythm, snare, and the hats and everything, you're hearing that really quick. That's the TKP used as a technical filler sound. And over time, just doing that over and over again and practicing it, the ability to do it fast increased and the ability to chain it in, into a back-to-back -back sound, just how you get like a TKP roll. That's how that evolves. And I've talked about that a little bit before when we've discussed how I kind of went around the, the route of learning technicality. 
And so doing that sound back to back for me sounds like and it's just muscle memory. I've done it so much that I can do it that fast and it changes the sound from just a triplet to a sustained roll of notes, which is pretty fun to do. The alternate permutation I also do is the KPT, which is switches some of the syllables around. And that sounds like very similar, but hits a little bit different. So again, the idea of stringing sound sets together is very simple, but you can do a ton with it. And it's basically a free form way to take that and plug into your beats to give a lot of variation and then mix things up and not just, you know, have a straight beat that doesn't change. So you could do something like, again, we'll go back to hip hop since that's kind of my default setting for illustration purposes. If you change up some of the sounds slightly just to give a different beat, and we're doing something like if you were doing a beat, you know, a performance or whatnot, you could do that whole string just like that and have no variation. It probably wouldn't get you any points in a battle, but if you're just showing people, hey, this is what beatboxing sounds like, sure. You know, it's a pretty straightforward, basic example of how you create a rhythm using percussion sounds from your mouth. But if we were to take that example and then tweak a few bits here or there using technicality, it changes. So if I, I'm going to try and duplicate this as close as possible, if we take that sound and then mix, mix up different parts with technicality, you might get something that sounds like... And just using small variations of the original rhythm and adding things like the TKP, which is the only thing I was using there, in different parts and, and sort of breaking it into sets or sort of chaining as like a, a drum fill on a drum set, that's how you can really mix up the way beats sound and hit, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of experimenting with, okay, if I chain these different sounds together, is it going to flow? It's not going to sound like I'm awkwardly jamming in a bunch of extra sounds and percussion type rhythms is it going to flow and does it sound sort of natural when you put it all together and that whole experimenting and building of rhythms using all the different tools not just technicality but just all the tools in general is what makes beatboxing really interesting and no two beatboxers do it the same way everyone sort of evolves their own flavor and style and how they put stuff together, I guess, unless you're in a class, like a big class where everyone's learning from the same instructor and doing it the same way. If you're learning on your own, which is what I did, you can just experiment, pick and choose what you like and what you want to focus on. And it kind of develops your style that way. And that's one of the reasons why I like technicality so much. You could do so many intricate and interesting things with just experimenting with the sound sets. So if we go back to the TKK, which I mentioned before, the one of my biggest projects to work on as, as far as developing beatbox sounds has been getting that sort of idea and technique down so I can do fast patterns. Again, it doesn't have to be speed, but I want to learn how to do really fast, complex rhythms. And so my goal has been to trying to master the TKK and I've been working on it for probably six plus months now. But I wanted to sort of experiment or for the sake of the discussion today, sort of show what I've learned and what I've been messing around with on my, my free time with just that specific sound set and how to create sort of speed patterns. Because again, it's very different in technique than the TKP, even though they sound very similar because of the rim shot. I think it's the rim shot that really makes the, the technique different. And so just in practicing how to chain the sound quickly. Again, we talked about the TKP roll that I did before. You do the same thing with the TKK. It's a little bit more difficult because it's a more unconventional sort of muscle memory. 
but I've been, I'm trying to get better at it and learning how to make the whole chain faster and more consistent. So let's see if I just chain TKK back to back, you might get something like, and I really should practice doing sustained chain of that. That's not what I've been focusing on lately, but the, that's just a kick at the beginning and then a bunch of TKKs after that, creating a chain. And I don't know how well that picks up on the mic. I'm actually not looking at the readout at all. Lion Tamer says, that's what macaroni sounds like. Uh, sort of, if you're doing it correctly, it should, it should sound more like a machine gun rhythm as opposed to like a wet noise. It's probably because I suck at doing it still. But if we were to break down the, the sound, the In short bursts, my TKKs are much better. The The sustained chains are, are much more difficult. But if we were to take the sound and do just a couple triplet noises just by itself, kick TKK is kind of my, my basic practice one that I do a lot. That's why you're hearing me do like first, and that's how you're getting them. That's a kick, TKK, TKK. It's like a double run, essentially. Another thing I've been messing around with, which has been kind of interesting, is changing things in between or how the sound sort of chains. So it's not just straight TKKs back to back. And what that sounds like might be something like instead of doing just TKKs nonstop, it might be TKK, kick, TK, TKK. This is difficult for me to sort of talk about out loud because I only think about it in my brain. I don't write it down. But... If we were to think of a rhythm, I'll just do it and try and explain it. That might be the easiest way to do it. If we were to go, okay, I got, I got a variation that I'm going to make more sense. Sorry. TKK, kick TKK, F TKK, or F T TKK, the f hat technically in between is also one that I've been working on because it's fun to do. And that sounds like it's four sounds, but instead of the kick, the it's just with an F. So you get four sounds. And if you do that, you can actually alternate, which is another good practice rhythm. B, TKK, kick. So it's kick, TKK, F, TKK, and alternate the two. And that sounds like and that forces your mouth to try and do the sound from different positions, which is really good practice. If you want to get good, you have to be able to jump into that muscle memory from any different angle and different instruments. And so if you take that alternating TKK string and you do it quickly, it sounds like I'm not good at doing it sustained either, but in just six or eight notes, you're taking that and you're breaking it up with different sounds and you're starting it in different sounds in different places, which is kind of fun. Let's see, another one might be TKP, TKK. I'm just thinking and trying to, to do these and then explain them. I should write these down because I'm not good at explaining it on the fly. But if we think about just taking the TKK pattern and plugging it into different permutations, that's why as I'm noodling around here just randomly, you're getting things that are going from just a to and again that flexibility is what makes technicality so interesting but it's kind of difficult to describe I'm realizing if you're doing complex rhythms trying to write them all out in notation which maybe I should do an explanation on that in the future so people can see how beatboxers write notation for rhythms that might make it a little bit easier like I could do a whole lecture on TKK or technicality specifically. If folks want to see that, then by all means, I can, I can definitely do that. But the biggest hurdle that I'm running into when it comes to applying the TKK is trying to figure out a good way to fit it into a beat. That's natural. That's the part that I'm still working on because as you're learning the different sounds and sets and the techniques, you could sit there and just, you know, in a vacuum be like, but 
but it's not really going to be cohesive. It's good practice. It's definitely good practice to do that, but you got to figure out how to take those sounds and slot them into things so it feels natural. And for me, since it's not the set I learned initially, it's way more natural for me to do that with the TKP or a variation on that. And as a result, it's difficult for me to use TKKs as chains within patterns or routines right now. I'm getting better at it and learning and trying to experiment with putting stuff in different places, but it's a long-term goal. In addition to just getting the speed and consistency, it's applying the sound set and putting it in place. It's something that's going to fit into a song and not just sound like a fancy speed combo that you just do. So that's more or less what I wanted to talk about on the sound theory. I do want to do some actual drills and practice because I've mostly been talking and demonstrating stuff for the last 30 minutes or so. Before I move into the, the BGM brainstorming sections, I guess what I'll do is I'll run through some just drills and apply a lot of what we've been talking about and then work in some bases and some other things to sort of give people a demonstration of, you know, just practicing and, and drilling these ideas. And it's not just me talking. And so I'll just sort of move through several different freestyles and try and bring in a bunch of the elements we've been talking about. And if anyone watching has questions or anything, then just put it in chat, stop me, and we can always talk about that. And then I'll work on that for just a little bit, and then we'll go into the BGM brainstorming part. So let's see. This will be a bit more fleshed out, so I'll start work trying to bring in other sounds and uh, experimenting with some pattern ideas. And then if I want to use any of this stuff for routines later, then I can just take a look at the, the footage. Hey, Naked Snake's here. Naked Snake says, Hi, I'm back from the new Fortnite season. I wasn't aware that there was a new Fortnite season, but hopefully that was fun. you have to excuse me. I know very little about Fortnite. I think I know more about the, the featured crossovers and promotional events than I do about the actual game. But that's fine. There's nothing wrong with Fortnite. All right. Let's see. For practice. Oh, I do need to warm up bases, so I'm going to kind of work all that stuff in at the same time. So let's see. Thank you. 
Edward says, Fortnite, Fortnite is the game with MLK in it, right? I wish that was a joke, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Pretty soon everyone will be Fortnite. Get ready for Mother Teresa Fortnite DLC. <laughs> if that's not a thing already. Iconic says, great stuff. Ah, oh, thanks, man. You're too kind. Naked Snick says, I'm also getting ready for my senior trip this week. Oh, that's right. You are going to the Floridas, aren't you? That should be fun. Be safe. Enjoy the park. Watch out for Florida, man. <laughs> Hopefully I don't encounter the final boss, Florida man there. Naked Snake says, ah, you'll be fine. You'll have to let us know how your trip went when you get back. All right, let me, let me see here. We're at an hour 10. Let us segue over to... The BGM brainstorming session, and that means I can actually sit down. So let me adjust my camera here. And my mic. Oh, it's good to sit down. It's much easier for me to do beatboxing stuff when I'm standing up. But because I don't need to be doing sustained stuff for the loop station in BGM, I could sit down and, and rest my feet. Let's change. Whoop. Oh, don't do that. VTube Studio. Let me change the caption and we'll, we'll switch to BGM. Go here. BGM brainstorming. Oh, I just realized I've been doing the whole this whole session without my headphones. My apologies. Normally, I remember to do that at the beginning. All right, let's see where we are on the loop station. All right, so the way we do the BGM brainstorming is pretty free form, kind of like the other stuff. Basically, with input from the chat, I throw different ideas on my loop station here, and we try and create BGM tracks to use in future content. Wazzy says, remember, Snake, you can take the lizards there? Free lizards? You mean take them home? I'm sure your local ecosystem would definitely appreciate that. Snake says, I can rescue my brothers. Yep, just don't get anything confiscated for contraband at the airport, I suppose. Iconic says, definitely got to do something with swear sensor sounds at some point. Yeah, um, the way I have my loop station set up now, and it's just a toggle. I just have it set up so that it doesn't, it doesn't cause interference with the stream. 
Right now, I can't take input from my computer and just loop and record it. If I turn that on, then anything I play on my computer, I can just hit the button to record and sample. Uh, for the sake of the brainstorming session today, it won't matter, but that is something that I'm going to be working on in the future because I want to take some sounds and samples to create some beats. Snake says, don't worry, I'm from Louisiana. We have plenty of big lizards. Hey, Red Dragon's here. What's up, Red Dragon? Welcome to the Jam Stream. Hope you're doing well this, what day is it, Sunday? This Sunday afternoon? All right. Let me make sure everything is set up here. Sound levels look good. Make sure my loop settings are good. I actually wrote down some ideas for things I wanted to experiment with on the BGM part of today's stream. I don't normally do that, but I had ideas and I didn't want to forget them. So we will we'll sort of work that in and then see where that takes us. Oh, Sour Lad's here. What's up, Sour Lad? Welcome to the Jam Stream. Hope you're doing well. All right. So the first one that I had on my list of experiments for today is something I don't think I've messed around with before. And I wanted to experiment with like a Latin dance rhythm, kind of like a club club type tempo for an electronic type song which you'd find. And I have the rhythm in mind. I want to mess around with things like synths and basses and other things. But to sort of demonstrate what I want to record here on the loop, the, the rhythm itself is going to sound something like... like so kind of like a Latin reggaeton-ish inspired type thing. And... It's not, again, it's not a style of music I normally listen to, but I like the rhythm. And I think we do some fun stuff with it. That'll be different from a lot of other BGM tracks that we put together so far. Naked Snake says, for a second, I thought you were going to do, you're going to have the sombrero dance. Oh, Red Dragon says, could be better. Oh, well, that's, that's a shame, but hopefully we can... Improve your mood with silliness here on the jam stream. So just chill and relax and uh, watch the chaos. Sarlat says, very Latin. Edward says, dame mas gasolina. I, I don't speak French, Edward. All right, let me see if I can capture this and then we will experiment around with things on the bass synth and everything else. It's, I want to build everything around this rhythm. So I'm going to turn reverb on for a, a little, like maybe 25% for this. Let's see about here. Uh... I want it to be barely audible. That's probably good. Let's see if we can get this thing recorded and then start messing around with other combinations of, of sounds. Let's just see if I can do this on the first try. So again, we want something to sound like... Maybe do two, two measure repeat and see, see if that gives us enough to work with. Let me see if I can get it. Edward says, Sacre Bleu. Uh, I don't... I don't speak German either. Okay, I also need to check where, where to put my BGM levels so you folks can hear it. That should be good. Let me know if that's too loud. As, as long as you can hear my explanations over it, and that's fine. I, 
think it'd be cool to put sort of a a shaker shaker sound effect like a I don't know if they consider it like a hat or or what but like a shaker sound over it and it might be interesting to layer that on the same track as the main rhythm so that I could turn it on and off with the undo redo let me let me think about potentially doubling snares up before we do that because I want the, the top layer to be whatever it is I'm gonna be taking on and off because undo redo with the loop station only affects the top layer camera keeps falling down all right now it should stay put we could do something like add a pf snare on top of the sort of sharp rim shot snares that we've got here that oh, came. let's see if i can overdub that And I gotta make sure I keep in, keep in mind where the measures start and stop. Okay, that's 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 gonna be difficult to time, but I'm gonna try. That should be fine. So if we double up the snares, it might be something like. Oh man, that, that's really difficult to overdub in time just because I'm not used to thinking about that type of rhythm. I almost have to do the, the kick at the same time just to figure out where it's going to land. Hmm. Yeah, I might not be able to do that effectively just because I'm not used to adjusting that rhythm. Let's see. I'm going to try and add a click to it instead of a PF. I think that's a little bit easier for me to sort of time. Let's see if I can do it for, for all sets of the rhythm. That was closer off by like a half second in the second half. All right, let me try that again. Oh, it's still off slightly. I might just leave it for now because I don't want to make it sound too distorted let's save this save our work first make it think it says we we baguette yes we we're very very educational when it comes to languages here let me try and get that that shaker sound on top of the rhythm and we'll see if we can get that to line up because what i was thinking is if we play it Something like and then have that cycling on top of the beat. But I think I overlapped it a little too much. Save that. Yeah, 
and I think I saved it with an extra input. That was not what I wanted to do. Yep, I need to fix that. I have to record this over again. That sucks. All right. I will save it before I, I, I mess around with the shaker sound on top so that I have a version I can revert back to if I need to, to and screw it up. So let's see. I'll do it again. That'll work. I need to, need to tail a little bit better. There we go. All right, we'll save that. Now, if I screw up the, the overdub and I can't revert it, it'll be easy to fix. Naked Snake says, something new for me. I've completed my second Super Sentai series. I assumed you had watched a lot more, but I also assume those are very lengthy consumptions. Some several dozen episodes. But that's good. All right, let me see if I can get that timed a little bit better. There we go. Nick Snake says, 50 episodes per series and I watch other tokus. So, yeah, okay. That's a lot, a lot of content. How do you watch those? Do you get, catch them streaming on a service or to watch fan translated stuff? How are you consuming all of that out of curiosity? All right. So with the, the overdub, I can now turn that off just by doing under redo, which is pretty handy. Off. And on. Off. On. T took me forever to figure out how how that command works, but thanks to some outside help, I was able to do it. Snake says it's like early anime during 2000s, people have to fan sub all of them. But yes, fan subs. Ah, I gotcha. But I imagine a lot of that stuff's not coming out here. And that's why you have to secure them through other means. Back when I was in Earth School, we used to watch a lot of fan subbed anime. In fact, the, va the vast majority of stuff wasn't even out here, and so that's how I consumed most of my Japanese cartoon content. All right. We have the beat, and we have a toggle on the overdub layer with the, the shaker part, and turn it on and off. Now we need a bass line, something to pair with our, our weird club beat. And I was thinking of doing maybe a vocalized chest bass and then doing a, like a couple different notes, but I couldn't really experiment with the rhythm until I had the beat in place. So I was thinking something like... But I don't know if it's going to line up pr properly. So let me see if I can just do a real experimental recording of that. And then if it works, I'll do it over again and maybe put like guitar to bass underneath it to give it more of a bass. The low end. Snake says, but it's slowly getting better. Common Rider got a Blu-ray DVD release with official sub with sub officially on our recent series. That's good. Are they are they dubbing those in English or are they just doing a, a regular sub? I guess you know you could have a whole bunch of different possibilities if you have English dubs. All right, let me see if I can get the bass line here. Oh, oh. 
I think the rhythm is off slightly, but I think if I do it correctly and get it to line up with the, the percussion, then I think it'll work. Let me see if, what happens if I pair vocalized chest bass with guitar to bass. I wonder how much that distorts it. I'm going to turn it on and you folks probably won't be able to hear what I'm saying, but I'm going to mess around with some of the bass lines and see if we can get something that, that pairs with the rhythm here. All right, let me turn Dynamax back on so I can talk again. So having guitar to bass on plus the vocalized chest bass, I think it creates kind of a functional combination. I don't know if I like it yet. I need to kind of mess around with it a bit more. But what I did was I took the loop of the single line that repeats a few times with a couple breaks, and then I put a sustained regular un undistorted bass line underneath it so you hear that bass hit for the, like the first measure and then it drops let me turn this off for a sec I kind of think it might sound a little bit better if I just do the regular bass notes and don't make it distorted Ah, Iconic says, gotta go. Thanks for the great stream. Best of luck with the beats. Hey, thanks, Iconic. I appreciate you tuning in as always. I hope the rest of your evening is awesome. So I will catch you in the next one. Let's take it easy, my dude. But yeah, I think I think I want to do a string, just a regular string bass, and then mess around with the the notes for that rather than go for the, the distorted vocalized chest. I didn't think that would be the outcome, but I think it might actually sound better if we can figure out a good bass line to pair with our, our dance rhythm here. So I'm going to clear that off and I'm going to try that again. That was at about 25% guitar to bass. So I'm going to just sing some notes and then try and record several different iterations and we'll see what sort of sounds good and matches up. Let's see. I'm going to put guitar to bass back on and you won't be able to understand me. So I'm just going to mess around with a couple different things.
All right. We're back. I'll turn this down so I can hear myself talk. So you should be able to hear the rhythm and the bass line I put down. I think will work. I have to mess with the balance a little bit. But you should be able to hear the, the combination of both both layers, both tracks right now. That's interesting. This is with just the octave feature, which I never use. I'm still learning how to actively apply that to different things. But if interesting. So octaving for this sort of takes the, the percussion layer and pitches it up a little bit. This is at about 40%. And if I flip it over to about 70%, it goes from like that or 75%. Very, very slight pitch shift, but it goes a little bit higher, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. This is what it sounds like normally, and there's the octaving on. Huh, I might leave that on there. That might be fun to mess around with. We've never had that particular sound effect on the track before. This is filter. Edward says it sounds like it's lowering the pitch to me. Let's see. I think what the octaving is doing is actually adding sort of a reverb, almost echoing effect, and making it sound like it's it's got kind of this dry echo. I don't think it's changing the pitch. So if you go off here, basic, basic set of tracks, and I turn it on, this is off, on, off, on, off. I think, yeah, I don't think it's changing the pitch. I think it's just making it reverb a little bit. It was kind of an interesting sound. I'm going to leave that on, on A. Let's see what we can put on, on effect B. That's ring modulator. It, it kind of does something weird when paired with octaving. That's lo-fi. No, I cannot put octaving on track B, looks like. This is chorus, another one I don't use too often. It basically takes like a, a sung chorus effect and applies it to everything. If I take it and apply it to the, the octave version with the, the kind of echoing, it almost sounds like there's like a chattering of voices, which is kind of interesting.
doesn't really do a whole lot when applied by itself without the, the octaving on. Let's see what else we got. Oh, roll. <laughs> creates like this, this repeating roll effect. That's kind of neat. Let's see what else we got. Oh, that's funky. You folks might not be able to hear it depending on what kind of device you're on, but panning delay takes the, the, the octave kind of hissing echo, and it makes it sound like it's scattering all around on the left and right side. I can hear it in my headphones. Ooh, that's, that's funky. I don't think I'd want to do that on a, a BGM track. This is just regular delay. No pan, it stays, stays in the middle channel. This is a slicer. I think it makes things a bit too choppy. Edward says, these sound effects sound like they can be useful for the next Revenant sound. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to have to refer back to this stream later. When it comes to some of these effects that can create sort of a more unsettling sound, I, I do want to put together something else for Halloween next year. And putting stuff like, especially that panning one, maybe something a bit more down-tempo, could be kind of fun to use, make it sound like the, the noises are all around you. And surrounding you, definitely. Actually, let's try something else. Seventy five percent with the octaving. If I turn that on and then take the shaker sound off what does it sound like it actually changes the rest of the rhythm and the bass line very minimally but I'm on under redo right now and if I want to just turn it on and off I can just toggle it with one button, which is really neat. All right. I need to save my progress. I don't want to lose the stuff that we've been doing. All right. Edward says, I think it makes the snare sound like a clop. Yeah, you're right. But it doesn't do it on every single snare. It's like every other snare. The first one has sort of a lesser hit. But the second one in the, the sequence has a more impactful, almost hollow clop type sound. And that's really interesting. It's possible... It's doing that because of the impact with which I made the snares. Like, I'm, I'm hitting harder on the second one. But that's an interesting effect as well. Mm -hmm. 
It is interesting that the octaving doesn't affect the bass line really at all. I can't tell when it's turned on if there's any discernible change in the bass lines by itself. Yeah, that's reverse doesn't really do much there. What if we added a heavier bass hit? And I just thought of this on the fly. We could see if it works. What if we added a sub bass hit that we can pair with our rhythm? Turn the rhythm back on. But instead of making it a loop, we make it a one shot. So basically, I can put it wherever I want. So let's see. At least if I can even get one accurately recorded. I was thinking like a. Now I gotta think of the right the right note to make it in key. Let's see. I think that's that's at least a step close to the bass line. But here's what I was thinking. So we do this. We make it a one shot. So that it's it's on button press instead of a loop. And then we do this. Turn the track effect off for this one. I don't know exactly where I would put that and how I would fit it into the rhythm, but it's kind of fun to do. Like if I turn the other two off. Actually, here's something else that I've never done. I don't know how to use a drum machine because I never owned one. But what if we converted the first one actually hold on hmm. before I cause irreparable damage I need to save this I wonder if I can turn the first track into a one shot and then choose how much of the rhythm I want to play I've never tried that it's just an idea I had let's see so let's see if I, if I hit it once okay then it does like one and a half repeats. No, does it does full full two measures. So what I'm doing here which is different from all the way we normally have the loop set up is I'm re-hitting the rhythm in order to loop it. So if I hit it once, then it stops. And if I want it to continue, I have to hit it again. But that also means I can do something like I just did and, and turn it into like a drop by just cutting the rhythm and repeating it before it gets too far. So it would sound like... And that's interesting. You're basically playing the rhythm in real time instead of just letting it loop. And I never thought to do that.
I don't know if that'd be the most efficient way to do like a performance if you're, you're doing this on a stage, but it, it is interesting that it does essentially function like a drum machine with each track on the loop, and there's five in total, functioning like a one-shot key on a drum machine. And that's how you're, you're able to just... I don't think I can do faster than 16th notes. And if you're trying to loop, get it to loop, then it's it's a little bit more difficult when you have something else that's just looping on its own because it's on its own like synchronization and time signature and if you're doing it manually it, you can get out of sync really easily which is probably why people have it synced up normally now the real question is if I turn one shot off does it preserve the original or does it alter it Looks like it's it's unaltered. Uh, let's see. Did I save the one shot? Yes, I did. Interesting effect. Another interesting thing you could do, which I've sort of used in some capacity, but not on any of these BGM tracks. You could do something like, let's say, hmm, let's say you're making a rap song, right? And you're recording verses and, or you're getting ready to perform a song that you recorded verses for. You could do something like record the chorus and stick it on one of the tracks and then turn it into like a one shot and I think it, there's no duration limit. That's one thing I'd have to mess around with. But you can make it so that you could repeat the chorus at the push of a button. And I think it would play the whole loop as long as it was a really long loop. Kiwi's back. Kiwi says, I can't really watch the stream. It's frozen for me. Is anybody else having issues watching the stream right now? I know Key was talking about the connection issues earlier, but uh, yeah, no worries, Kiwi. Uh, it was nice of you to drop by and, and hang out with us. So I will uh, I will catch you later on the next one. Let's see what happens if we add the octaving. Oh no, it doesn't doesn't change anything with that, I guess. Well, that's kind of interesting. This is the phaser effect, which is currently applied to everything. Yep. If we turn off the rhythm and the bass line, but we just have the, the phaser effect applied to the single bass hit. I don't know if you folks can hear it. That sample is kind of loud, so I'm pretty sure you can hear it. But listen to how it sounds like a distorted, almost like a space ray gun with a heavy bass hit. This is with it off. This is with that at 100%. That's really neat. I kind of like the way that sounds. But unfortunately, I can't have it on all the time without having it apply to... Well, let's see what happens with octaving on. I guess I could. Let's see what, what the rest sounds like with phaser. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, it gets the phaser effect gets kind of muddled because it's applying to everything versus when it's just the the base hit. Might be a little loud. It's interesting though. It sounds cool. I can't think of what exactly that reminds me of, but it sounds like a really really low frequency ray gun blast or something with the way it has that phaser effect on it. Pretty neat. I don't use phaser that often. I probably should. This is flanger. Another one in the set with filter and, and phaser. This one has sort of an oscillating counter melody that goes with it, which is interesting. Notice how it, it, it goes sort of up and down. And it does the same thing. It, it, it oscillates that, that that sort of overlaid rhythm with the other parts that are just constantly looping too. Hey, first time chat from Sorta Shoe. What's up, Sorta Shoe? Welcome to the jam stream. All right, so far for the layout of this particular track, we have a couple things in play. I don't know if I want to record anything else on top of this. I'd rather just mess around with effects on the rhythm and the bass line because one, we have the ability to turn the shaker off. Oh, not if we saved it, that's right. Okay, that's fine. I need to remember that. So that that's locked in now, but it's okay because I think we can we can use the other effects to sort of supplement that. But the first effect, we have Octave. Phaser. I don't even figure out how I'm going to apply it. I think I'll do phaser for the second effect. And I'm not quite sure how I want to use the, the heavy sub bass hit. Because it's a, it's a little bit clashing with the rest of the sort of vibe of the song but I kind of like that I have it there if I figure out something to do with it in the final recording of the BGM track I'll throw it in there it could even be like a start and stop accent too Now I kind of regret not putting the, the shaker sound on its own track. I forgot that you lose your under redo, you save. Yeah. 
That's okay. Let's remember that in the future. What I'm doing here is I'm sort of planning like a rough draft of how I would record the song and arrange all the different sections. That was vocal distortion. I, I don't like the way that sounds at all. Let's not do that. All right. Let me stop this. Turn that off. We'll resave everything the way we have it here. All right, so I think I want to I want to start with maybe I'll start the I I'll have to think about if I want to start with the rhythm or the bass line first. Maybe we could do something different and start with both. I don't I normally do a lead in with one or the other, have it repeat for a few measures, and then bring in the rest. But maybe we could just go for everything at the start, and then have it run for a few repeats, then throw on the octaving effect to give it that kind of scratchy echoing noise and then go back and forth from there so the real question is for this particular one what do we want to call it i usually take suggestions from the chat on what to call these bgm tracks since you folks are all here sort of vibing with me so what's a good sort of relevant and possibly pun based name that we can call this thing Feel free to throw your suggestions in chat while I'm, I'm sort of messing around with the, the layout. We're in a click track just just for funs this for funsies ooh that sounds really weird with the octaving on I'm gonna take effects off that one
starting with the click track might be interesting too. I don't think I've ever done that on the song before. What if we did something like this? We just start. Edward says something in Spanish, I think. That's possible. Again, I don't speak Spanish, so I would have to rely on you folks to not give me a suggestion that's going to get me in trouble. Run the repeat, now we switch up to the octave version. I don't know much Spanish either, to be honest. I, I figured you speak Spanish, Edward, since you, you tossed out a lot of stuff here on stream. I, I do think, I, I don't know if it's just the rhythm itself, or maybe the rhythm plus the bass line, but this one has a lot more of a groove than some of the other ones we've done. makes me want to dance. about something related to this this octaving effect that's creating kind of a uh, the echo it almost makes it sound like it's more echoey to me the way it hits my ears kind of like it's it's echoing off of something like the inside of a container what about Hollow Groove? How do we feel about that as a song title? We could even put it up uh, to a vote too. Let's come up with two, two ideas for a song title and then I'll put it in a poll and you folks can vote on which one you like better. So I'm going to suggest Hollow Groove. Somebody else give me another suggestion that we can put into the poll for, for what this thing sounds like. Tamer says, Hollow Groove sounds like a JoJo stand name. You're not wrong.
I just realized this was probably competing for me, competing with me for, for a sound there. It's a little loud. I'll drop it down there. My endeavor says, hollow groove, send them to a hollow grave. Stando power! If I was creating this for the Halloween pack and we we're going more sp spoopy, Hollow Grave would be a great name for a song. Maybe it's been done to death. I don't know. Lion Tamer says, name it not plastic cheese. I can't name it something that's a community meme, man. People who aren't from the community aren't going to understand it if they see this. As funny as that would be, unless we come up with something that is really, really reflective of like a plastic cheese type sound, then I don't know if that would be appropriate for a BGM track. Purely not for the reason of spiting Wazzy. We could, we could be a little more creative than that. Edward says, Baila de Caballos? Is that how you pronounce that? That's Dance of Something, right? You're going to make me Google Translate. Survey says, <laughs> horse stance. Baila de caballos. Actually, it'll tell me how to pronounce it. What does it say? Hey, I was right. I don't speak Spanish at all. Just from what I know. Baila de caballos. Horse stance. Oh, from the clopping sound? Sorry, I was I was tabbed over to Google Translate. Dance of the horses? Is it because of the clopping sound? That's pretty funny. You know what? I like that, Edward. That that's that's pretty funny. I'm gonna make that the name of the song. In fact, let's see, I can change the song, t the, the track title, but it's actually a huge pain in the butt to do that on the loop station. I will make a note somewhere. Clicking, clicking track can also be relevant too. I think when I do the final version of this one and I structure it, I'm going to have the, the constant click track be in certain spots. It won't be persistent through the whole thing. Maybe I could time it with the, the chorus break. Or not chorus, the, the octave distortion. Go ahead and stop that. I've I've made a note on my BGM ideas file here. Dance of the horses. I'm sure the bronies will get a kick out of that if there are any in the audience.
All right. I think we have everything captured here. I like the way that one turned out. I wasn't quite sure what direction it was going to go in, just based on the, the initial rhythm that I threw in there. But um, I'm kind of pleased with the, the combination of results. I think that'll be a good one. It's got a, it's got a fun, fun groove to it. Let's see. I think we are good to wrap up for today. I had ideas for another one, but it's, it would take a lot longer. And I do have to, to step out the door in a minute here. We'll save that for next time. I, I started writing down my ideas just so I don't forget them. When we get back together to do another one of these. I can load up this other one that I have. It's a very different sort of style and feel. And we can we can work around that for next time. So before we, we completely close out, let me see who's online to raid. I know I tend to, to stream on Sundays at off hours from most of the people I know. Let's go see if there's any VTubers out there creating music. I'll, I'll just run a search on Twitch and see if I can find somebody. Let's see. Actually, I'll, I'll just put this in the background. So it's not dead silence while I take a look for someone up there. If I don't find anybody, that's okay. We don't, we don't need to raid someone every single stream. people on. That's okay. All right, let's do this. We will go ahead and switch to the outro for today. Where are we at? All right. There we go. And we will go ahead and wrap up. So, thanks once again to all the folks who stopped by and hung out. I intend to do another recording session for these BGM tracks and get stuff together. The Stream Sounds collection is pretty close to being done. I think I need a few more, and then it'll be ready to, to release. So I'd like to do that before the end of the month. We will we'll see. If I can get enough of them together, I'll put something out on Twitter. Uh, Wazza says thanks for streaming. Yeah, thanks to all the folks who came and hung out once again. It, it's fun to do these every once in a while and, and get input from the chat. Thank you for helping me create the Dance of the Horses. So with that, we will go ahead and sign off for today, and I will catch you folks in the next stream. Have yourselves a good evening.